Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. It is great to be here at the ASEAN Summit for my third year in a row, something no other Canadian Prime Minister has ever done. And I have to say, the faces around the table may change a little bit from year to year, but I truly feel at home and amongst friends around this table. I want to thank Prime Minister Sipandon for hosting us here today and, as he mentioned, for taking on the role as Canada's country, country coordinator this year until 2027. And that uh, will be an important year for Canada because it'll be our 50th year of diplomatic relations uh, with uh, ASEAN in that particular year. Uh, but I also want to thank uh, the Prime Minister for uh, welcoming me to Laos, uh, the first time a Canadian Prime Minister has ever come to Laos, and to mark also our 50th year of relations with Laos this year. I also want to thank ASEAN Secretary General Dr. Kao for his steady leadership. And I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Prime Minister Ibrahim and the entire Malaysian delegation for serving as Canada's country, country coordinator over the past three years. When I spoke with Anwar a little earlier, I made a, a special uh, efforts to thank him. So you'll pass that along to him, uh, Minister. My friends, together we face numerous daunting challenges. Avec l'arrivée de nouvelles technologies comme l'intelligence artificielle, les enjeux de sécurité alimentaire, les changements climatiques et l'instabilité géopolitique, le monde, et en particulier cette partie du monde, devient de plus en plus complexe. At the same time, we're focused and faced with exciting opportunities. Canada recognizes that ASEAN is more than just an association. It is a vital, global player that has a central consensus-building role across the region and around the world. ASEAN represents the fastest-growing region in the globe. In fact, trade between Canada and ASEAN has nearly doubled since I first became Prime Minister in 2015, and ASEAN is now Canada's fourth largest trading partner with almost $40 billion in trade annually. That's why these relationships matter. That's why these conversations matter. That's why our collective leadership matters. And I can say with absolute confidence that because of our shared commitment to tackling global challenges and seizing opportunities, we've already made incredible progress. Since we launched our strategic partnership at last year's summit, we have opened Canada's Indo-Pacific Agriculture and Agri-Food Office in Manila, we led two successful trade missions to Malaysia and Vietnam, with two more to the Philippines and Indonesia coming this December. We've established three offices to facilitate export financing in Jakarta, Singapore, and Manila. FinDev Canada is about to open an office in Singapore to support sustainable infrastructure investments throughout the region. We're investing in programs that provide students in ASEAN member states with the opportunity to study in Canada, and today, I'm announcing that we are upgrading our diplomatic missions in Vientiane and Phnom Penh to full embassies, which means Canada will have an embassy in each and every ASEAN country. All of this builds on our Indo-Pacific strategy, which recognizes ASEAN's central and growing role in the region, and it's delivering real, tangible progress. Progress that means more business opportunities, more middle-class jobs, and a higher quality of life for all our citizens. But our work is not yet done. We have upcoming trade missions and business delegations to Cambodia, Thailand, Laos, and Brunei. On s'appuie sur ce travail, sur notre partenariat stratégique, et sur notre premier plan d'action ASEAN-Canada, alors qu'on commence à élaborer notre nouveau plan d'action qui sera en vigueur en 2026. While I've been encouraged by our progress on a Canada-ASEAN free trade agreement, I remain highly focused on landing that deal in the coming year, a deal that will unlock billions of dollars in increased trade and countless community-building jobs that are the backbone of a strong middle class. We're keen to expand our cooperation on energy, specifically on nuclear power and renewables, and as Canada assumes the G7 presidency next year, I intend to bring the views expressed at today's meeting directly to the table at next year's G7 summit. My friends, Canada is a Pacific country. We care about this region because we're part of it. 
That's why I'm determined to expand on our shared commitments and priorities and to ultimately deliver real results and prosperity for our peoples. J'ai hâte de commencer les discussions et d'adopter une déclaration commune ambitieuse qui démontre la force et la portée de notre partenariat. Merci beaucoup, mes amis. Thank you, my friends.